Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to Med Made Easy, your channel for making medical topics much easier to learn and remember. Before we get into this video today, make sure to follow us on Instagram, Pinterest, our Facebook page, and also the Nursing Questions and Info group on Facebook. You can see the links in the description box below. All right, let's go ahead and get into this video on TB skin test. Have you ever gotten a TB skin test and wondered, why is there no bump? Have you ever wondered why you had to get a two-step TB skin test? Well, these are some of the questions I'm gonna to answer today in this video, with my main focus being on tips on administering and reading the test correctly. It is extremely important that this test is done correctly and read correctly because it can be become an invalid test if it is not. So, let's and get right into the tips on TB skin test. Are you informing, administering, and reading this TB skin test correctly? Let's talk about tips on administering. Tip number one, this is not a vaccination. I have heard some nurses use this terminology when explaining a TB skin test to a patient. It gives the patient an incorrect and accurate information about this test. You really don't want your patient thinking that this is a test that is gonna prevent TB. Instead, the patient should know and understand that this test is one of the ways that we can help to detect TB. And so when you're giving them this or before you give them this, before administering it, let them obviously know what it's for. Tip number two, the TB skin test does not protect you from getting TB. So this goes along with tip number one. So it's a simple thing to understand there is this is basically kind of a, like a screening detection test for TB. Tip number three, the name. Sometimes you'll hear different things being called for this test. The most common thing is probably TB skin test but it's actually called the Mantox Tuberculin Skin Test or TST. Some people also say the word PPD test, which that's basically the solution that is used for the TB skin test. Let's move on to tip number four, where it goes. 0.1 milliliter of the PPD purified protein derivative is injected into the intradermal space of the inner forearm. This is why it's extremely important for the needle to be at a certain angle. The needle angle should be at five to 15 degrees. This helps to ensure that it's gonna get into the intradermal space. If the PPD is given in the subcutaneous space, which is, which is deeper, it will result in what's called a rapid washout from the administration site, and this will not give time for the reaction to develop if there's a reaction that's gonna develop. Too superficial of an injection, it could potentially leak out onto the skin. Tip number five, needle bevel needs to go up. This is super important because it will also help to facilitate the PPD to go into the intradermal space. Tip number six, the, the size of the wheel should be six to 10 millimeters. If you don't see a wheel that is within the size, the test needs to be readministered. I do see more individuals who administer this test, they tend to run below six millimeters um, more often than I do see it being given too much past the 10, millim 10 millimeters. Generally, if the wheel is too small or you don't see the wheel, the, this indicates that the needle was inserted either too deeply or that not enough solution was injected. It is important that the PPD is given in the interdermal space. If you do not see a six to 10 millimeter size wheel, the test should be readministered and it should be done at least two inches away from the original site. Tip number seven, after administering the PPD, and you see the will, no band-aids, no lotions, no cream should go on the area. But it can affect the test results. Tip number eight, do not rub or scratch the site. Rubbing the site may obscure the real test results. Washing the area usually is typically okay as long as there's no vigorous scrubbing or scrubbing at all, actually. The person should avoid continually also checking or rubbing on the test to see if there's a bump. That's a big tendency for most people. They should wait until after the test is read um, in the 48 to 72 hour range. If it itches, which sometimes it does, it, you can put a cold cloth on it and that sometimes helps. Tip number nine, is there another way to get tested for TB besides the TB skin test? Yes, there is a TB blood test available. It's called interferon gamma release assay. What did you say? Or easier said, IGRA. And there are actually two kinds in the United States that are currently approved by the FDA. One is quantiferin TB gold in tube test, and the other is the TB spot TB test. A blood test would specifically be given to someone who has had the BCG vaccination. 
BCG always sounds like Bee Gees to me. Get it? The Bee Gees? I guess this could apply. You know what I mean? One thing that's important to know is that both a TB skin test and a blood test are not usually recommended, so usually need one or the other needs to be picked. Tip number 10. Live vaccinations may interfere with TB skin test. Generally, it's a good idea to separate the two by at least four to six weeks after the administration of the live vaccine. Let's move on to the reading tips, the reading of the TB skin test. Tip number 11. It has to be read within 48 to 72 hours after being administered. If it is not read within this time, then it has to be readministered. Tip number 12. In duration, not erythema. Understanding that erythema or redness of the site is not what you're reading. I think that's a big misconception that is slowly getting corrected. In duration is the thickening and the swelling and the hardness under the skin at the site where the PPD was administered. That's what's going to let you know if the individual likely needs to go to the next step. You should find the margins of the induration and measure that. Now, with that being said, many times a positive site that is indurated will also be accompanied with erythema. Induration should be measured in a transverse dimension. A very important thing to remember is that when recording the results, do not simply write negative or positive. This is a common mistake that doesn't allow comparison of the reaction with later measurements. Tip number 13. A negative test does not always indicate that a person is free of TB. Generally, after administration of the test, an individual who's infected with TB, the site is going to give a reaction um, to the PPD if it's positive. But this does not always happen. If you had exposure to someone with TB within the last eight weeks prior to the test, it may result as a false negative if you have it. There also may be something called a booster phenomena that can create a false negative. It is important to understand that there can be false negatives and also false positives. Two-step testing is particularly important to avoid false negatives. Another thing to consider is that if a TB test is administered incorrectly, this may result in a false negative. Also, a weak immune system, like someone who has HIV, can lead to false negatives. Tip number 14. Interpretation is based upon two different things. The diameter of the induration and the risk of an individual being infected with the TB. Interpretation depends on these two things. For example, if the induration's if the induration is 15 millimeters or greater, size is, is po considered positive. But then you have certain categories of individuals, if they have those risk factors or those certain conditions, that they're, the millimeter of the, the induration doesn't have to be as big. And you can see this list here. I always think it's good to get a little reference um, chart to carry with you if you're going to be reading these. Tip number 15. A positive TB skin test does not always indicate that you are contagious to others. What this indicates is you have likely been infected with the TB bacteria at some point in the past. The TB skin test does not distinguish whether or not you have latent TB or if you have the t actual TB disease, which some, some people will say active TB. Latent TB is not contagious and does not spread to others. Individuals with latent TB are asymptomatic, but it's extremely important that the individual with latent TB get treated as soon as possible to prevent TB disease from developing. Approximately 5-10% to 10 of individuals who have latent TB will develop the TB disease in their lifetime. This percentage is higher with individuals who have certain conditions such as HIV. Individuals with latent TB will usually have a positive TB skin test. However, these individuals are going to have a normal chest x-ray and a negative sputum test result. The way to explain about latent bacteria is basically they have the TB bacteria in their body, but it is not active. In the actual TB disease, this is when it's considered contagious to others, and the individual is usually showing some kind of symptom. Some of the classic symptoms that you probably heard about, the coughing in general for several weeks, hemoptysis, coughing up blood, uh, fever, chest pain, night sweats, weight loss, unintentional. These individuals are not only going to have a positive TB skin test, but they're also going to have an abnormal chest x-ray and also sputum culture. Moving on, tip number 16, booster phenomena. Let's talk about this. Why the two-step process? A two-step process is done to detect past TB infections that may now have diminished skin test reactivity. Higherpoint.edu explains that there's something called booster phenomena. Sometimes people with a previous TB infection lose the ability to react to the TB, uh, to the tuberculin solution. So when they are tested years after the initial infection, they may not have a reaction. 
However, if they are tested a second time, as in the two-step process, they are more likely to have a boosted ability to react to the tuberculin solution and thus show, their show the true results. As far as two-step testing, the second test is usually placed after seven to 10 days from the first and of course read within the 48 to 72 hours after the administration. Well, those are the tips for today. I hope those were super helpful and make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the thumbs up button and also hit the notification bell for the latest videos. And don't forget to check out our Instagram site and also Pinterest and also our Facebook page. These are super helpful sites for your medical education. All right, everyone, until next time, take care.